I'm Ann. Hi, I'm Pam. Hi, I'm Hannah. Hi, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you again live <laughs> from Austin, Texas, because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Hey everyone, happy Wednesday. This is our second start. Hopefully now we are in the Living Fell group and you can see us. If you can see us, wave hi and tell us where you're from. We are here in Austin, Texas. This is our little hub for being of service to you. These are three amazing women who help make everything happen here at Living Felt, and we're happy to be here with you today. So we're going to get started. Have fun. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Marie. We are Living Felt Felting Supplies. If you're joining us for the first time, we should be in a group now, live. Anne's giving me the big thumbs up. Yay! <laughs> Somehow we've had some technology challenges a time or two. But this is what we like to do on Wednesdays, so as you join, please just say hi and tell us where you're from. Even if you're watching later, you can chime in and you can comment along with the live broadcast. And what we are going to do is answer some questions that have been posted by friends in the past. Hopefully have an interactive hour and answer some of your questions as well. And hey, if you have answers to questions that people are posting during the broadcast, please feel free to share those as well. Anne is our producer and moderator, so she'll be watching things as they are posted. And we're gonna do our very best to answer a selection of the questions that were posed ahead of time. Everybody who posted questions um, that made it into today's broadcast and contribute during the broadcast will get your name in hat to win some super fun prizes. So, very excited about that. I'm gonna see if I can say hi to some people. Oh, good, there's a group. So here's Linda says it's cold in Michigan, but not too cold, that's our heat wave at 40. <laughs> it's cold for us. I see Sonia and Maria and a group of other people that are hidden now. There's Connie, Sherry, Jean, Donna. Hi, gals. Hi, Diana. Hi, Penny. Glad to see you and all our new people. Welcome, too. So here's some things we're gonna do. I want to propose a theme for 2018. The thought occurred to me as I read so many things that many of you are wanting to try this year, and I think about so many things that I am wanting to try this year. And so the theme, and I'll see if uh, Anne can type this for us, for 2018, I'd like to present to the group and maybe encourage you to adopt it, is to explore, expand, and stretch. So many of us are wanting to learn new things or try new things and sometimes it's so easy to ask someone else to do them and then we feel safe. And I want to encourage you this year to make this a year where you explore more, you expand more, you stretch more, you be willing to get it wrong and you be willing to get it right. And you be willing to have sort of a first time and maybe even a discovery that you share back, <clears throat> excuse me, with the group. I need a drink of my water. <laughs> and with that, <clears throat> I'm going to share some uh, funny exploration that I had in the past around someone's question. <clears throat> and also, I'm so sorry, <clears throat> I want to use this as a jumping off point for what we start decided to do this year. I don't know how many times we'll be able to do it, but some of you saw that we posted our birds of a feather challenge and some of our friends sent in pictures we selected really a wonderful array of felted birds 2d and 3d to put on exhibit here in the shop we're going to share those with you uh, during hopefully the next two or more broadcasts depending on how they come in and um i'm hoping that if you have been wanting to needle felt a bird try bird legs, try and make a clay beak, try and do a bird picture, that you take this next 30 or 45 days and take some steps towards that goal. I did. I've been wanting to felt a bird. I see so many people's birds that they're 2D bird pictures that people have been making and some of you follow my personal page. I have wet felted a canvas, which I'll share with you. I'm gonna add needle felting detail to that and I've even endeavored to draw the bird or color it, if you will, with my colored pencil so I get better at it. So this year, that's the theme I wanna propose and we're gonna tie it in all year long. Explore, expand, and stretch. Okay, what do they think? Anyone think about that? I don't see any hearts or anything. Oh, I'm gonna heart, heart. heart you all 
for your, for your, it, whatever you endeavor to try this year. I'm hearting you guys so that you guys give it a go. Uh, there is just a continuous stream of hearts. There has been <laughs> I so love you guys. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do after I finish needle felting my bird picture, I'm going to share all the pictures in an album. I don't think it'll be a tutorial because it's really Marie just venturing into new territory. But I will share all of those pictures and you can take from them whatever is good for you. Okay. And with that, I'm going to jump right into, um, oh, I just want to say watch for more exhibit opportunities this year because I have some ideas of things that you might try, uh, th themes that we'll pick up on. It might be felting a unique 3D object. It might be needle felting a realistic animal. It might be wet felting, well, over resist. It might be wet felting clothing. So think about that thing or those two to three maybe burning desires you have to learn. And I really want to encourage you to take steps towards those this year. Yes, good. Okay, and with that, Karen Rutherford is my first question. She asked about armature, and some of y'all have been sat through a few of our armature answers uh, when we've done some demonstrations on armature. I'm just going to show you a few things. She said she's a new needle felter, and she hasn't done anything with armature yet, and she wants to know what to use or what would be a good starting project to use. So... What I want to do before I pull out the wire is show you guys the second armature I ever created. And all I have are ghastly photos, but I'm going to show you those. The first one was for a two-foot dragonfly. And the dragonfly has since flown on. Um, but I want to show you this armature I made for this kooky felted rooster. And so the picture's bad, but um, Anne will share a link to the blog page after. So hopefully you can kind of see this rooster. He's shaped like a big cone. He's just got these funky skinny legs and he's playing bass and singing. Um, and my, I used to have a, a metal, I still do, I told Anne, it's in my garden now, uh, a metal rooster that someone made that looked almost just like this. And this thing is 14, 12, 14 years old. He's super old. <laughs> anyway, I was making, my mother-in-law loved that rooster and I decided to make her a felted version, but I didn't know how. And so I endeavored to just make up my own armature. So this is Marie's encouragement for you to just make stuff up and try and find it along the way. So here's bogus picture one and two. All I had were these steel wires. These are like picture, where do I go? Like picture hanging wire. And so I twisted a bunch of the wires together so that this is a, a group of wires, this is a group, they're all spun off of there, and this is floral tape wrapped around this same like steel cable wire, the kind of stuff you hang pictures with. And the tennis ball was to give him like an anchored base and make his legs a little more stable because I didn't know what else to do. So then of course I wrapped the legs with wool batting right there. And then I just started working with it. I wrapped these top ones with floral tape and expanded it. I just stuffed the middle with wool and then wrapped around it with wool. Now I'm not going to take you through all these pictures. Anne will show you the blog link where I finally posted. A couple of years back I, I posted some of these old photos. And really the only reason I share those photos is to say explore, try. Just like what I say, be willing to get it wrong and be willing to get it right. It, the rules, there really are no rules. So, what anything on that, Anne? Sheree Davidson shares that she loves making stuff up. It <laughs> stimulates my brain and inner child both. Yeah, make it up. Don't worry about getting it wrong and don't worry about getting it right. I am I am the last person who will be able to tell you how to get something exactly to scale, which somebody asked about last night. You know, and I have to do the math. Um, so I'm going to share just a couple of little armatures that are already made and um, encourage you to explore a little bit. Uh, let's see here. So something you might do, let me grab, I'll grab my um, floral chenille stems too. So again, this is for Karen Rutherford. Karen, one of the places we like to start is with chenille stems. And one of the things I encourage people to do is make a little model with just, you know, pipe cleaners is what we called them in the 70s. 
because um, that's what they were used for. <laughs> but just make little models with chenille stems and get your basic plan of action. I like to use two different colors, one for the head, spine, and tail sometimes, and a different color for the legs so that I can figure out what I did later. Because once they're all twisted together, sometimes it's hard to tell what you did. And when you use an armature, I want to encourage you to any tips, any tips where there's wire, curl them in because they always want to poke back through the wool. So you'll notice these legs came down and were bent back up. The head was folded. So play with chenille stems and then give it a go with something a little more sturdy. This is just our green cloth covered armature wire and you can see it's the same deal. I just twisted a wire together and it goes head, spine, and tail, and then the legs wrap around. And you can bend these back into feet, if you will. And this could be a dog, this could be a wolf, this could be a horse or a cow, or who knows, I know it's short for a horse. Maybe it's a shorty horse or a donkey. But I just wanna encourage you to play with some simple shapes. Let me show you some humans too. What do you got, Anne? Marianne Anthony shares, Marie is the MacGyver of felting. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a MacGyver. <laughs> I just don't know what I'm doing half the time, so I, I, you know, I experiment. I experiment a little bit. So this is all with the floral wire. This would make a great small shape. So the other thing I wanted to say is, at, or not, um, yeah, this is the green cloth covered armature. It's 18 gauge. Ours is 18 gauge. So you can see it's kind of stiff. It's not super flimsy. But the thing I want to encourage you to think about is if it won't stand up on its own or if it doesn't have integrity on its own, just use it as a shape model and keep working your way up until the armature, the wire feels strong enough for your project. Because loosey goosey wires just don't get stronger if you pile wool on top of them. They're still, they still want to be flimsy. Um, and then we move up to our 12 and uh, 14 gauge wire. Play with both of those. They're super malleable. This is the thicker stuff, but it's super bendy. It's not like steel wire. It's a nice aluminum that's really easy to bend and shape even when it's twisted. So, you know, work out your models in the littler stuff and then you can maybe even get your measurements before jumping to this. So these are just some dog, if you will, uh, bodies. But if you want to go to humans, you can do the same thing, big or small. I didn't bring the pipe cleaner ones, but like this little guy uh, is an unfinished Christmas pixie that I just abandoned. Um, and he's done also on the green armature wire. So my body shapes, I didn't bring an armature one. I probably have one in the, door, in the drawer. They just look kind of like this. I do them very similar often. Um, and that is, twisting a wire to make the body and then work down the legs and the arms. Just play with it a little bit. You can keep them simple, you can keep them small, um, but play with it a little bit and just be willing to start with a simple shape. Like if I don't know how I want to wrap the wire or if I'm just teaching, I might start with the, a wire and then I'll add on the, the chenille stems to play with it. How long do I need it? How much do I need? So without giving you instruction on exactly how to do armature, um, if you start with these real simple wires, build some little shapes and play with them. Qu should I answer any questions? I have nothing, I don't see No any. questions? Oh, you know what, one just came in while I was saying that. <laughs> Jean Denson asks, would you stab a hole to put the person's head on the armature? Would I stab a hole? You know what I've been doing, I, I do a couple of ways to do that. So. In the beginning, when I learned how to make dolls, there was no head um, in the armature. Let me show you. Originally, when I learned to make dolls, there was no head in the armature. And you just made a body like this. And then I was taught to sew the head on. And you wrapped wool around the neck. And truly, I found after a while, I felt like my sculptures didn't hold up over the years. They didn't feel like they had the integrity when you were trying to sew through what felt with so much wire, like so little body to sew through. So I started doing it a little more like this. And this is what this is for me. This is a neck 
And some of you have seen that I'll build this head on its own wire. So I will twist two wires together and make my head. Let's see if I have one. I didn't bring a head. <laughs> I didn't bring a head. But I have shown the heads in, in previous episodes where I'll make the head on its own wire and then I'll fit that wire through here and bring these two together. So if this one's too tall, it can roll down, but this gives you a good strong neck and a good place to mount your head. And that's how I do it now. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Let me know if you need me to re-explain it. And Marshalline Brower asks, with your thicker armature wire, would you use that for needle felted items which are more opposable? You, you absolutely can, yes. The thicker armature wire is absolutely posable. And it's the same thing like Mega Ned uses. She uses the heavier gauge wire for the legs and the body and the lighter gauge wire for the tails. So, and all of her sculptures are posable. So it's the same, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else? Oh, uh, Gilda Goodwin wants to clarify. Hi, so the body is not finished when the head is applied. I, I usually don't know that the body is not finished. It's more like this guy. See how he's kind of halfway done? He's still naked. <laughs> so he's only, he's only halfway done, and I'm going to apply the head. That wire underneath at the neck needs to be exposed when I put the head on. Mm -hmm. We usually, in my workshops, we'll build, the, we'll build the body so we get the size and then we'll make the head. So we'll just build the wire armature, then we'll make the head, then we attach the two, and then we start putting all the wool on. Mm -hmm. You could wrap this part of the body and even the legs if you want to before putting the head on, but the, the neck wire needs to be exposed to anchor that head in. And then it's really strong and it's really poseable. You know, you can do anything you want, but sewing it in, you don't get the same kind of posing freedom. Mm-hmm, okay. Is that it? We're good. And says we're good. Okay, good. So then I'm going to jump to Amberly Barnes. Hi, Amberly. Are you, is she in the UK? Where's Amberly Barnes? Where are you? I forgot. She's asked about string jointing, and she wants her joints to be really, really strong. There's two things that we use. Uh, there's two things that we use when we're string jointing. One can be like a button thread or upholstery thread, thread, and one can be a waxed floss. And does that happen? Can you hand me that little bobbin behind you or something with waxed floss on it? Let me show you what this looks like. And you know what? We, we sell this as part of an eye detail kit, but we don't sell it on its own just because there's so much labor involved in sort of distributing this little stuff. It looks like, um, it looks like dental floss in a way. I'll cut some off. It's more like a honey color. And you can usually split it, if you can see those little bits there, usually it can be split into different thicknesses, so you don't have to use it in its full thickness. You can split it down. This is good stuff to use because as you tie it, it will stick on itself. The wax, unlike, I don't know about dental floss, is all over the map, you know? But this stuff will stick to itself as you tie it down. So that's called waxed floss, and they probably sell it like at the leather shop. But for today's exercise, I'm gonna show you how we string joint a head with button thread. So button thread or upholstery thread, and it will not say all purpose on it. It will say button thread or upholstery thread. So Bunny has volunteered to be decapitated for you. <laughs> Bunny and head have been separated, so I can show you how we do this. And I'll try, and we make sure we're, I'm focused, or do you think I should turn it down to the table? Hopefully Maybe if I, let me move my step out of the way, and we'll put it on the table so everyone can see. So we're just going to turn down for a second and show you. Can we see everything? Oh, oh, put a little bit too down. Can you see good? Um, let me, I'm just going to make one. Yeah, I think that's... You think it's okay? It seems kind of far. Let me see. I'll hold up here so then I, I can see. So here's Bunny. And you see these threads under here. I'm going to leave them 
because they go to his mouth and nose. Sometimes I'll sew in each eye and then run the strings under the mouth and nose. So I'm gonna leave all those in there. But here's a couple of ways to do it. You can either run your thread. You remember first, I think, lesson is that your pieces should be very, very firm. Notice I am squishing the heck out of this guy. Your pieces should be very firm so they can handle the pressure of the thread without distorting. You can run your thread either down through the top of the head or underneath the chin. It depends on how, on how you want to do it. This is going to be kind of hard um, to loop under, but if you have a like an upholstery needle that's bent, you could also arch under there. So just run your needle that way, and then you're gonna have two ends of your thread. I'll pull these out. Bunny's getting lots of love. Oh, he wants his head back on. Okay, so now you have two ends, you have two ends of your thread. We're gonna run each of these down through the body independently. So re-thread your needle. I'm sorry if you guys can't see me, I can't see my hands. Rethread your needle, and then you're going to go down through the top of the body, all the way through, uh, you know, into the neck, all the way through the base. Your, so your needle needs to be long enough to go through, and you can pull that all the way out. So notice now we're just dangling one thread. Does that show? Okay, so now we're going to run the second one through. It's so easy. And the thing is, you want to be sure that you can tie really tight. And if you feel like the button thread isn't doing it, then go ahead. I can't see with my glasses on. <laughs> if you can't uh, feel like it doesn't stay with the button thread, then try and switch to the waxed floss. I've used both with success. So thanks for your patience while I try and fumble here with my stuff. So just give yourself a little space, both where the thread goes in and where the thread comes out. And then we're gonna pull this so, so tight. So here's Bunny, get his head where you want it. Pull both of your threads through and pull, pull, pull. Now I want you to see how hard I am pulling. Can you tell, like I am really pulling on this. Notice the whites of my fingers. Notice, you know, I'm just putting all kinds of pressure on this. Bunny, first of all, is not getting distorted and the thread isn't breaking. So if your thread is old or is weak and can't, if you can break it with your fingers, it's not good for thread jointing. So you wanna pull it really, really tight and then you'll just tie a knot in the bottom. So I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna pull this super, super tight and tie a knot. Sorry, I can't keep it all on camera. Pull that down, 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 pull tight, 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 tight. It should be so tight that you get an indent in the bottom. So he has a fresh indent. Look, he's like a little thin. His neck is a little squashed. That's perfect. That gives him just a little room to stretch. So tie a few knots. Get it how you want it. If you have a nice indent, it's easier to bury it. But notice you get an indent without getting distortion. That's the most important thing. So now I'm just gonna cut these threads off. And you know I don't have this color, exact color. <laughs> this is like an old lot. <laughs> but so I have a little tiny indent and we would just put the wool right on top of that and re-needle felt it. And then Bunny is ready to go. Alrighty. And the Bunny is made out of uh, MC1, correct? Yep, core, core wool and MC1 actually. Oh, I'll turn this up. Sorry for the choppiness. Yeah, he's made out of core wool uh, and MC1. So I did make him uh, core wool first and then covered him in MC1. And the white on him is core wool too. Yep, that's my little bunny friend. Did that help with string jointing? Does anyone have any questions on that? No? Good, pretty easy. Everyone's like, yeah, yawn. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Um, that was, oh, Linda Rutherford and Karen Rutherford? Hand carding. Who asked about hand carding? Linda this, Broderson. Linda Broderson. This is Rutherford. <laughs> Linda Broderson asked if we would do a quickie demonstration on the hand cards, which I will do. Um, and I just need you to be able to see it is all. I don't have my stool in here today, but... I will stand. So let me, you, I'm going to use the countertop. Is everyone doing good? I feel strange not hearing from anybody. 
Uh, we are doing good. Oh, Kate Williams does ask a question. Why would you use string jointing versus wire armature? Oh, but some people like string jointing more like an old fashioned teddy bear so that the head turns, you know, the head turns. It, some people just like that style to use string jointing. Like for him, his only his head is string jointed and his legs and arms are just a simple wire armature. Um, but the very first teddy bear we ever did and the first product we ever had was a string jointed teddy. And it's just a style. That's all. It's just a style that some people want to, to be able to freely turn that head or move the arms and not just be posable. It's just a style preference. Good? Okay, so for Linda Broderson, we're going to do a quickie quickie demonstration on using the hand cards. And I brought in two really fun colors. This is, what is this one, Ann? <laughs> uh, copper. Copper. Uh, so barnwood and copper are these two colors, and this is merino top. So we're just going to blend these to show Linda how to do it. And let me know if you can see, I know it's kind of busy back here, but if you can see the counter since I need to have my lap. Okay, are you able to see the countertop in the camera? Mm -hmm. No, you can't see the countertop. I can turn down. Okay, a bit. so yeah, and why don't you... Just bring it, go ahead and bring us down so that I can. She's going to bring us down once more. Can you turn the handle? Yep. Where, you can see this? Nope. Okay, good. All right, so here's what we have. There's, there's two different sides of the, the hand cards. And just remember how you use them is one hand under and one hand over. That's how we're going to hold them, under and over. And so to load them, usually this is on my knee. And I'm not going to pile too much on them, but what you want to do is load the wool on the bottom of the teeth and then maybe go up to about this point. You don't want the fiber to go all the way up here because it tends to form a ridge as you card. I didn't measure anything. I'm just I just thought these two colors looked like they would go nicely together. So this is barnwood and copper. You can just put the two fibers right together, one on top of the other, and notice that it's not like mounding up out of the teeth. It's, you know, just the right laying right into the teeth bed. That's what I use this hand for. And then when we card, are we too close or close enough in right here? Oh, can y'all see this right down here in the, in the corner? That's Speedy, he's napping down here, my baby dog. <laughs> oh, he opened his eyes, he heard me say his name. Okay, are we good here? All right, so what you're gonna do is it's sort of a rocking motion, and we're going to grab onto these fibers and just pull back. Just grab onto these fibers and pull back. Notice that motion. The teeth are just lightly touching each other. We are not grinding them together. You can switch hands. Some people don't and some people don't say to switch hands. Do what's comfortable for you. I didn't put very much on here. But notice that we're just taking the fiber off of this paddle with this gentle rocking motion and that it's starting to get blended. We'll do it once more and then I'll show you how to take it off also. So it's, these, these paddles are curved and they really support that gentle rocking motion. I flick a little bit so that these fibers are not folded under when I go back to card. Just flick so they're on top and continue to your little rocking motion to take that those fibers off. So this looks pretty good. It's starting to blend together and then you can just peel it off with the paddle that way. Super gentle. If you don't like how it's blended, you can restack it and card it again. But this looks pretty good and you could pull out with this little stack now, you could pull out the colors you want um, you know, more to the red or more to the brown, or you could card it so that it's more homogenous. And Kimberly Pulley asks, can you do that with MC1? Yes, you can, Kimberly. And I don't have any queued up here uh, to blend, to card. But didn't I use the hand, did I use the hand carder? Did I card together MC1 in the dog portrait video? Mm -hmm. I think I did. Okay, you can turn this back up. Yeah, Kimberly, in the dog portrait video, which is under learn, uh, I, I used the hand cards to card MC1. I'm pretty sure I showed 
how to do that. Like there's a whole hand carding video there and we'll, I'll double check that, but I'm pretty sure because that's how I make bigger, bigger patches versus just little ones. Uh, Irene Clark asks, after it is carded, could you show the blended fiber by the camera? Whenever I try, they get tangled and I can't make long fur out of the blended fiber. Oh, sure. Look, um, I mean, I'd be interested to see what's causing it to get tangled. So if, if when you card, you keep it, see how they're all still going straight? If when you card, Irene, if there's two things that happen that seem to cause it to get tangled. And one is if you don't flick and those fibers fold under, they get crunched. The other thing is if the fiber gets too high up on the teeth bed, it starts to form a ridge. And then as you bring it off, it gets matted together. So just try the flicking, keep the fibers from getting too high and keep them from getting too far out on the sides. That should prevent them from getting gnarled. But you can absolutely do this carding without, without it getting all messed up. You can keep it totally straight if you want to. Any other questions on the hand cards? The hand cards, I uh, guess. Laura Ebert, Ebert mm -hmm. says, are blending boards and hand carders used for the same things or are blending boards for something else? You know, people often use the blending board specifically to create Rolex, so for spinning. But I saw a great video, I think it was on Ashford's website, who's the creator of these uh, nice hand tools that we sell. The, and this lady is a Russian felt maker, and she uses the blending board to make mini bats and then pieces them all together to make a scarf. So in her, I think she even had space challenges, what caused her to do this. She had space challenges with her layout. So she was making, using the blending board to create mini bats and then piece them all together. So she could piece a couple of pieces together, wet those, roll them, piece more together, wet those, roll them. It was really amazing. So traditionally, I think the blending board is great for creating Rolex, which somebody asked about, and um, we're gonna try and have Anne spin from a Rolex next week. She knows it's on because <laughs> uh, she's a great. She is a hand spinner. She uses the the top the, to spin from, and it's really nice. And so I've challenged her to spin it from a Rolex, which she's not done. So I know you guys will be forgiving. She'll practice before then. Um, but traditionally, that's what they're used for. And cards are to blend the fibers for whatever purpose. You know, most of these tools were invented more for spinners than for felters, and then we've started picking them up. So, also, Irene, if you feel like your stuff's getting messed up, after you've carded it, then just pull through, pull through if you can. So, these are all the fibers I'll just, just finish that I carded on the hand carders. And they're really nice and straight. Those would work for long fur. Okay. Anything else on that topic? On that topic, no. Uh, going back to attaching heads and bodies, mm -hmm. when the reader says in some of the felting books, they tell you to leave the bottom fairly loose, that you can felt the head to the body. Oh. Is this still a way to do it besides the string tying? Yeah, you don't, the string jointing is an option, but I wouldn't leave a body loose to felt to, per se. You know what I mean? I felt it firm. The, I know what they're saying. They want it to still have receptivity. You don't want it to be rock hard before you attach one part to the next. Um, so, if you have a squishy body, that's going to be very unsatisfying. So you really want to build all your pieces, firm core out, firm core out, and the outer layers could actually be not quite as hard as the core if you want, but I wouldn't leave it fair. Fairly loose is not a word that I would use before joining something. I would say build them up side by side, but you can join with them um, not being squishy. They don't have to be squishy to join them. So, yeah, we join stuff that way, too. <laughs> lots and lots of things. Any other questions? Yes. Yes. Maria Cohen question? asks, are we having a demo next week on making a heart? The, for the, uh, so Maria Cohen is asking about these hearts up here, and we actually wanted to do more than a demo. Our goal was for it to actually be a felt along. And I was looking at my calendar. We could either fully wing it next week, or I would rather schedule it for, what's the last Wednesday in January, Anne? Anne's going to look at a calendar for me. Um, because there's one Wednesday where I know I can't. 
I can't, I won't be able to focus because I'll have both my dogs. <laughs> I know it seems silly, but they, I won't be able to focus. What's the last Wednesday in January? The 31st. It's the 31st. Let's do a January 31st. Will wet felt a heart? Probably closer to this size, and I'll show you how. And all you got to do is have, you know, an ounce or less of MC1, about an ounce of MC1. I'll post a supply list after this weekend, probably. I'll post a supply list. You can use Merino Top if you have it or other batting or whatever. But we'll do a felt along together on January 31st. Mm hmm Yep. We'll do that during Wooly Wednesday right here. So we won't do it next week. Cool. Okay. What I'd like to do is jump to Connie Wood asked to see some grays and we're going to have Anne show you the grays that we have and we have some other fun things to show you too. So take it away, Anne. Alrighty. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, Connie, for asking to see the grays. We're going to start with the merino top. So this is just actually all of the monochrome colors in our merino top line. So right, we'll just go through them real quickly. <laughs> We've got ebony here. This is slate, I believe. We're going to have to brush up here. Charcoal. Charcoal, thank you. <laughs> this is charcoal. This is slate. This is slate right here. This is mist. And this is... Pebble. 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 This is one of our new guys. He's really pretty, isn't he? Mm -hmm. And then we've got our collection of whites here. This is lily white, French vanilla, and this one is also white sand. one. White sand. It's like it's the other way. White <laughs> okay. sand. I'll take this through that. Just, just okay, gray fabulous. Stuff. Alrighty. So the grays are right here, and then this is the gray that we've got in the New Zealand Coriadale. This is smoke. So this is how he fits in there. Yeah, they're all very different. Mm -hmm. All right. Is the, Let me see. Do you have any questions? Kimberly says she loves pebble. Mm -hmm. uh, Gilda says, where's Oliphant? Uh, sadly, Oliphant is, is no longer. But we've got a, a really great line. Probably the closest to Oliphant is going to be Slate right here. They're mm -hmm. actually, actually fairly close. Mm-hmm. Can't tell which, that's okay, I'll, I'll show them through the whites. Will Lily White work with CX2 Winter White? Well, let's talk about that. Gilda says, great sadness. Mm, yeah. <laughs> that is the, is that the moon shadow kit? That is the moon shadow kit. <laughs> moon shadow. A catching yeah. moonbeam? Yeah, would you uh, grab it? Why don't you grab a catching moonbeams? Yeah. Yeah. All right, you're going to take us through the other. And we'll be right back with a catching moonbeams, which is going to change slightly, actually. Is Oliphant in there? It is not. Okay. Do you want to go through? The no. Perfect. You, you do. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alrighty. This is our catching moonbeams merino top studio pack. It's got right here ebony, lily white, charcoal, mist. This one right here is smoke, and then, oh, I, I switched charcoal and charcoal slate Charcoal and slate, that's okay. Charcoal. <laughs> charcoal and slate. But slate's actually going away. No. Yep. Oh, we're missing that from our bucket. Yes. No, no, we haven't. Yep. Okay, you're going to take us through that. Okay, we are. Hey, Anne, what's all that stuff behind you? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is our current MC1 line. This is over 85 colors um, and we are going to be getting online this week our Color Me Happy bundle which is going to be one two ounce roll of each of the colors that we've got in stock in the MC1. Again that's usually around 85. So this is the entire MC1 line. Isn't it glorious? <laughs> Yay! Yay! <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> that's, that's lots of thumbs up. Is, oh, Kate Housley says, how much? Someone else says, I want them all. Gilda says, yay. Oh, so pretty. <laughs> wow, best time ever. Want, 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 want. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Anne, for putting, for putting that together. 
Absolutely. So we're we are going to have a one button. So we decided it has been purchased enough times. In fact, again this week, people have asking to purchase every color of our MC1 felting bats. If you haven't tried it, you can start with something as small as a goodie bag, which is like a pinch of 12 colors. You can buy a studio pack, which is in a family bank of colors. And then some people who really loved it have decided to really invest. And there are some great pictures online of their walls of wool that they have. Um, so Anne has crammed all these colors in here. We have about 85 colors in-house at any one time. Sometimes colors are just kind of out of rotation, but usually they're like, a color like ruby or something grape or blueberry that you don't see all the time or wildberry um, but these are most of the colors that we try and have available so if you haven't tried it we hope you will you can needle felt with it you can wet felt with it and there will be a one button push to buy and um, you always get free gifts if you buy that if you get the color me happy bundle because yay <laughs> but that's what it will look like except it won't come in the fancy wooden crates so someone had asked about what fibers they could felt with the MC1 and you are welcome to try felt using either the New Zealand Corydale or the Merino Top. What you're going to find is they're very, very different. So MC1 is a very short, crimpy fiber um, and it's just that. It's crimpy, it's lofty, and it's very short, whereas our merino top is very long and very fine. But you absolutely could work work with them together. It's just they wouldn't card well together. You might want to cut your merino top to work with them together. We definitely consider that. There are so many different types of projects that it's hard just to answer that question straight up. But if you're doing a 2D portrait, you might find that trimming the fibers down a little bit helps because otherwise you're really going to have to twist and twirl or trail the merino top to lay down on your picture. So just play with it. And these are the grays in our MC1 line. This is Black Onyx, Charcoal, Storm, Winter, and Aspen. We are working to bring one other blue into the, the family line, or one other gray into the line. Hopefully this year it might happen. It's a little, it's a little more of a blue gray, wouldn't you say? It's a deeper blue gray. but. Um, these are the grays we have right now, if you want to try working with those. Okay, anything on that, Anne? No. Okay, so with that, what I'd like to do, just here, here, sort of here towards the end, is show you our current merino top line. So, someone said they liked Oliphant, Gilda, and she was sorry to see that go away, and we were too. Um, there's been some changes in our industry and uh, the distributor who made those merino tops is no longer going to make them. So what we've done is brought in um, as many beautiful merino tops as we can share with you and I promise we're going to bring in more of those and more fibers for you to play with this year whether you wet felt or needle felt. So let me show you uh, the line and then we can look at a couple of things together. So I think I'm just going to kind of follow this trend right here. And this is just what we have today. Let's see, maybe we'll go like that. Hmm. How to put it, how to put it. Uh, Terry asks, what's the strongest fiber, MC1, Burrito Top, or New Zealand Corydale? That, I can't, I don't know the, the question well enough to answer that question. You know, I don't know what she means by the strongest fiber. These are just, I don't know what that means, the strongest, the strongest fiber. The, the, Marie, the MC1 is short. So while it will wet felt really well, it'll needle felt, you know, really strongly. You can really compact it down. You can wet felt it to be really strong. It just, if you're asking about on its own, um, you'd have to think about, you know, how easy, maybe you're asking how easy you can break a fiber. And I would say that if you're trying, talking about the tensile strength of the independent fibers, uh, merino is probably stronger because the MC1 is so short. You'll find that you can pull off little teeny tiny pinches of it. So I'm not sure if you can clarify that question. Maybe I can answer it better. So here I want to show you the merino top as it is now. Um, this is the the line, and we're adding in a few more things as we go. So what we have here are three different shades of white, and I hope that those show up a little bit. 
Lily White is our brightest white. It's not quite as stark. From time to time, its brightness might vary a little bit. It's not quite as stark as the CX2. Someone asked, would those two work together? They're the closest companions in white, um, is the CX2 and the Lily White. But you'll find that the Lily White might not be quite as white, not quite as processed. The CX2 is really processed to get that white. It's almost, it's almost brittle and you'll find that it even crumbles a little bit while you're working with it, it kind of sheds. So, but we have three shades of white. We have, now we have lily white, we have white sand and French vanilla, we call it. Um, this is the monochrome, these are earth tones. We'll be bringing in more earth tones, but there's a really nice array. This is sort of the purples and berries family. Um, some people had asked us about a nice maroon. And so I wanna show you these these two colors here, this is um, Bordeaux and Mulberry. Um, great colors. Really, if you are someone or someone you know likes burgundies, everybody who looks at Bordeaux and Mulberry just fall in love with these colors. In, in person, they are beautiful, especially the Bordeaux is very, very strong. Um, these are our warm tones going into warm tones, going into yellows and greens. We have a nice teal, which is new. There are, a lot of these are new. You haven't seen them before, um, but this is a really pretty teal, which we didn't have before. It's more towards the blue and it's a blue teal. So if you like jewel tones, this is a wonderful color to choose. I can't see anyone's comments, anything? Happen in there? Um, mostly just everyone is just <laughs> loving this. <laughs> and here's some blues too. So lovely blues. We have more blues coming. I think I said more greens. Let me show you this this new green. It's so cool. There's a couple. Where's Marrakesh? Oh, I'll pull up. Marrakesh is a... Oh, it's over there. This is called Sage. It's one of those colors you almost don't know where to put it. And it's a very natural color. It's called sage. It's sort of in between the yellows and the greens and even the neutrals. Awesome, awesome color. And um, we, we have lots of new colors. So Anne's going to post a link to the 19.5 micron. We're going to break out these categories. We've, we've sold a blend from 19 to 22 microns. We closed out the 22 probably a year ago, or in the last year, we, we dropped down all the 22s, and we're still carrying the 21 and a half microns. Now we're down to just bits and pieces of the 21 and a half micron, and we're going to continue to just sell that out. So if you see something online that you want, you should probably buy it or call and ask about it because we're getting down to the bottom on some colors. And uh, But all of this is in the 19.5 micron merino category. And if you want to look at just these, you can click on that link that Ann sent. If you go to the merino top itself, they're all together, but you'll see right now we just have text links for the 21 and a half and the 19.5 micron. Any questions for that? Uh, Anne's well, trying to keep up. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. Oh, <laughs> Tracy McCracken Palmer shows that she's got a new cow. Or I, a new what? Tracy. I may have, I may have, I may have uh, I'm trying to find a few comments. <laughs> <laughs> There's, everybody's so excited. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so excited. These are really pretty colors, and I promise we're going to bring you more. And you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to have Hannah come in and show you one more new thing that we haven't had in the past. A couple of people have hinted to some that they got that I dyed, but uh, Hannah is going to show you this brand new bling thing that we have for you to play with uh, with your felting. Take it away, Hannah. Yay! Hey, y'all. Hope you're having fun. So this is our new beautiful sari silk waist. Back. <laughs> Yay! Sorry. <Yay>. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna just pile it all in there. Go for it. There you go. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> That's perfect. Okay. So we've got a ton of colors here. We'll start. This is our kiwi. We have olive, saffron, garnet, shell, onion, <laughs> Bordeaux, Bordeaux, 
um, iris, lavender, corn flower, corn flower, pine, <laughs> pine, lagoon, mm -hmm. mushroom, we have a beautiful white, mist, this is charcoal, cocoa, and black or ebony. Mm -hmm. So those are beautiful, mm -hmm. nice little silky, shiny fibers. <laughs> How do you use it? Would you grab me the purse and the, the, the cubby? This, this stuff is so amazing, y'all. I want to tell you, it's dyed by the same people who do our merino tops, so you're going to find some perfect, thank you, Hannah, you're going to find some perfect matches in there. Um, the one thing I would say is right now we call this color evergreen and merino top, and this is pine here, so we might change that, but... You're going to find some great matches and you're going to use it in surface design and texture and what you're going to want to work with it are scissors because tearing it apart is just almost impossible so have your scissors handy when you go to work with it and it's very very shiny let me show you the mist up close maybe it'll show on the camera mist looks like mercury to me it's got so much sheen to it it's so pretty just gorgeous and I'm going to show you Bordeaux. I, hopefully Bordeaux will show up. It's like this beautiful, beautiful, whiny, burgundy. So you're going to use this in surface design. And um, this is iris. It's like a purple iris. Hopefully you see that how beautiful and purple that is. You're just going to use it as surface design and sheen. And this is an ancient purse that you all have seen, uh, you know, a hundred times. But all this bright orangey stuff down here is sorry silk waste that's just chunked on so it's one of those fibers that will just kind of do its own thing squiggle out and it'll make some nice texture and some nice surface design in your wet felt work you can try and needle felt with it i mean it'll be somewhat silk seems to be somewhat resistant to the needle but you could definitely try and give it a go now all of these fibers this is what everyone's been working so hard on in the last 48 hours i would say all of these fibers are now online. So all of the new merino tops are online and ready to ship and all of the sari silk fibers are online and you're gonna find those under the luster fibers. Any questions on that? We, nope, we're good. Nope, no questions, okay, good. Okay, so I think we're about out of time and it's time to give away some presents which is one of our favorite things. So listen, y'all, we're going to do some felt alongs this year. We said January 31st. I will post a supplies list before then, like we have done in the past, of what you're going to want to have to wet felt these hearts with us. But look, think about the colors that you want to work with before we get there. What kind of beads you want to work with, you know, what color theme or what charms you might want to put on it. Because we won't really get to that part. We'll just felt the hearts together. So we're going to give away some prizes. Come on in, y'all. This is one of our favorite parts, so everyone who's contributed questions and thoughts, come on in here, Anne, who's contributed thoughts and ideas, is going to win a prize, so Anne's going to be our, why don't you pick a name, Anne? Oh, I'll be your bad girl. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Gilda Goodwin. Yay, Yay. Gilda. She won our bag number one. Bag number one. Bag number one. A wet felting and flower kit. Yay! Yay. Congratulations, Gilda. Thank you for playing with us. All right, next. Let's see. Amberly Barnes. Yay! Congratulations. Amberly, congratulations. What has she won, Anne? She wins a two ounce roll of MC1. And oh, I almost a little too. I'm sorry. I'm watching. <laughs> and a uh, very small hat form. <laughs> All Yay! Right. Congratulations, Amberly. That's just something to play with if you want to experiment. People have been asking how to make bowls and baskets and what other things they can make with our needle felting hat forms. And we're actually going to use, I'm going to bring in our Easter basket a little bit later. It's a little too early for Easter basket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, Hannah, tell you, girl. All right, All number right. three. And we've got Laura Devers Ebert. Yay! Yay! Hey, Laura, tell her what she's won. She got, ooh. <laughs> she got 10 feet, right? 10 feet? 
10 mm -hmm. feet of our 14 and 12 gauge wire. Um, our 18 gauge 24 pack wire. Oh, there you go. And 38 <laughs> yards of our 22 gauge wire. Yay! Yes. Yes. Congratulations, Laura. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, Thanks for playing with us. Cheer yourself well this week. Remember to explore, expand, and stretch. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye, y'all. Okay, put the name in the bag. Awesome.